Hello class, welcome to week 9, uh, one of our last lectures in the course. So the, the title of the course is Ethics in Street Photography. I think this is something really important for us to discuss on a leaving note because it is one of those topics that is extremely touchy and at the same time it's very important that we discuss it in an open manner because without discussing the ethics of street photography, I think we open ourselves a lot to criticism. And by thinking about the ethics of street photography, once again, it affirms to us why we take photos, what's the point of us taking photos, and challenges us to be a lot more sensitive when we're shooting street photography. So I'm going to start this off with a quote by Nick Turpin. It's actually an excerpt from the, one of the required readings from this week. He says, the right of a person to privacy in a public place is equal to the right of the photographer to take a photograph in a public place. So when it comes to street photography ethics, I think one of the first issues that really comes up is that people feel that it's not right to take a photo of a stranger in a public place without their permission because it may be intrusive, it may be insensitive, it must, it may, um, you know, be strange or awkward, it may make people feel uncomfortable. The first thing to really point out too is once again, street photography is legal and it is within your legal right to go out and take photos of strangers in public. The irony is oftentimes that people are out in public and they're getting constantly photographed by you know cameras, uh, you know, at the traffic signals, in stores and this and that, yet people seem to have a big problem with their photos being taken. Another irony is that today's Facebook age, people put themselves out there and share all this personal information with themselves and do a little bit oversharing. So it is ironic that nowadays people seem to be very, you know, resistant and reluctant to gain their photos taken in public. But realize that, of course, when you're out and taking photos in public, you know, I think a lot of ethics, you know, is something that's kind of internal. And one thing to consider about street photography and ethics is, you know, really consider, you know, kind of what you're trying to achieve through the photograph and at the same time having empathy for your subjects. You know, when you're shooting street photography, you know, inadvertently you might upset people, inadvertently you might disturb them, but think about, you know, why you're taking a photo. Is you're out there to take photos of society, humanity, and kind of like a photojournalist, there's a statement you're trying to make through your photographs and with everything in life you can't always please everybody and at the same time when you're shooting your subjects you don't want to be obtrusive rude you know sure you may not ask for permission when you're taking the photograph to get a more natural reaction but you know if somebody asks you to stop you know it's probably the best idea to stop and just really once again consider people's uh, situations and really have a genuine connection with a person have a a feeling of, you know, when you're taking a photo of something, you know, you're kind of taking a part of them to be with you. And so trying to do it in a sensitive manner, you know, of course, taking the photos, smiling, not being sneaky about it, thanking people, conversating with them afterwards, um, these things are really important. A really big topic to discuss is taking photos of homeless people, destitute people, is, you know, in street photography, I don't think that there's truly any rules. Um, rules are there to be meant to be broken, but at the same time, I think there are some guidelines. Generally, when you're out shooting street photography, a lot of aspiring street photographers starting off really are kind of drawn to taking photos of homeless people, people in poverty, people destitute, people who might be drug addicts, simply because I think part of it is because you know they're different from the normal and average person, and we're kind of I think as people and photographers, we're kind of drawn to the unusual. But at the same time, the problem that I see a lot of people taking photos of homeless people is that they see a homeless person is about to take a photograph of them and says, oh, you know, I just want to take a photo of them because, oh, why? Because, you know, they're homeless, they're different from us, and they're kind of weird. And it, in a lot of cases, I think that um, if you have that kind of mindset, mindset, it's much more exploitation than anything. Um, because it's almost like looking at somebody who is homeless or destitute as like almost an animal and or like a, some sort of stage act and just taking a photo just to make a photo that is just really, really 
different from what we're used to seeing. And I don't think that's right. Uh, my personal opinion on the subject is that if you're going to take photos of homeless deaths to people, really doing it in a, a meaningful and a, you know, a really sensitive manner, you know, you probably just don't want to take a photo and just run off. You know, if you're going to take a photo of a homeless person, I would say, you know, at least to give the guy, you know, maybe talk with the person, chat with them, you know, give them a dollar, be genuinely interested in them and their situation and don't try not to treat them any differently that you treat somebody else. And, you know, and, you know, maybe if you're going to take a photo, you know, perhaps ask for permission uh, when taking the photograph. Um, there's times I take photos of homeless people without permission as well. And it all depends, once again, um, you know, what kind of statement you're trying to make. Um, generally speaking, I think that, you know, homelessness is a huge problem. And the, the sad thing is that there's so much wealth out there, inequality of wealth. People out there buying new BMWs or Mercedes while people are dying on the streets. There's a photo I took about a month ago. There's a, a photo, of, it was a homeless person right next to an advertisement of like a brand new sports car. And to me, the reason I took the photograph is that it was kind of a message that, you know, that having that juxtaposition showing the irony and the absurdity of all these material possessions you want. Um, so generally when it comes to taking photos of homeless deaths to people, just really think about why you're doing it. There's nothing wrong about it inherently, but just try to be sensitive um, and empathetic to your, uh, your, your subjects. One last thing, uh, one of the last things I'll share with you is this recent controversy that happened um, during the Haiti earthquake. There's a Swedish photographer named uh, Paul Hansen, and he was recognized as an international news photographer by winning uh, this one prize winning image. And, you know, uh, disclaimer the, the next photo may upset you. Uh, the next, actually, the next two photos may upset you. And, it's something that, you know, once again, look at it with an open heart and, you know, kind of let it challenge your beliefs about photography and such. So this is the initial image. It's a photo of a 15-year-old girl named Fabian, and she was shot dead during the Haiti earthquake. And you can see that she's down here um, having, I believe, stolen uh, paintings. And you have all these other men here in the background. And, it's, you know, we see we see a lot of these photos in the media and the news. And, you know, there's a lot of times that it really does capture us, um, you know, emotionally. But there's other times that we're so oversaturated with these type of images that we almost become numb to them. However, what we don't often see is kind of the background behind the photograph. Um, you know, this is uh, actually another photo taken by a different photographer of the actual scene. And so this is obviously one of those things that a lot of us as normal people, we don't see. Um, you see all these photographers lining up, taking the photograph. And myself personally, when I saw that photograph, to me it almost looked like a pack of vultures, um, you know, on somebody who was deceased. But at the same time, the sad reality is that um, at the end of the day, somebody needs to capture this. Um, but, you know, think about this photograph and making it really challenge yourself and thinking, you know, why you take the photographs and really understanding what it may be like behind the scenes. There's another photograph that I haven't included here, which is another photograph of the same girl. And the sad thing is in the next, in the, the photograph, I don't have it with me, is she was actually slightly moved. And somebody took the photograph and displayed it. So that's another controversy in which it appears that somebody moved her body to make a more dramatic shot. And whether it was actually, you know, the wind or somebody moved her on accident or something like that is quite uncertain. But thinking about, I guess, the truth behind a photo, um, I don't think that photos themselves tell the absolute truth because a photograph, even though it could say a thousand words, there's still a lot of information that's missing. Um, you know, in conclusion, when you're shooting street photography, really consider the ethics behind the photo by thinking about being empathetic to your subjects. Think about why you take photographs and what kind of meaning you want through the photographs. You know, don't simply just go out there and take photos that, you know, just interesting or pretty or just different. Think about taking meaningful photographs, photos that people look at your photos 
think differently about society, think differently about humanity, and really challenge people in the way um, they see everyday life. Um, thank you for listening, and once again, consider uh, you know the power that your street photography has and how to harness that power and really make a change and difference in the world. Thank you.